Okay, let's move on to chapter two, as you can see. Now I got my reading glasses, which are brand new as of two weeks ago. Yeah, I guess uh, you turn a certain age and your eyes go to CRAP. Um, and I also changed the way my phone is situated so that you guys can have a better view of me and everything around me, as you can see. Pictures of me and my three brothers, pictures of uh, me, my brothers, my dad right there, my grandfather right there, me and my wife right there, and it's another picture of me and my wife right there, caricature-wise. Anyway, you don't really care about that, do you? You want to get back to the story, so let's get back to chapter two. Vanderbilt University Hospital Intensive Care Unit, Nashville, Tennessee. Images swirled in his mind, the dry air of the open desert, Bloody, bloody comrades screaming for help, Fran, friends, family, enemies. Jessica in a blue gown at the Marine Corps ball. Jessica walking down the lawn at the University of Virginia. Jessica crying as he slipped the sparkling engagement ring on her finger. Jessica breathing her last breath. Jessica, Jessica, Jess. Cal Stokes slowly opened his swollen eyes. His body felt completely immobilized. What the hell, he wondered. Slowly and with no small difficulty, he tried to focus on his surroundings. He was obviously in a hospital. The writing on the door still looked like a grayish blob, so he decided he'd figure out the particulars later. He remembered the attack in the alley. He remembered Jess dying. The pain in his heart returned. When he thought about that last moment with his dead fiance, he tried to focus on her beautiful face and her tranquil eyes. He'd always felt that her eyes were what really did him in that first night that met they'd met six years before. Those beautiful eyes would always haunt him. As he, as he pondered his misery, the door swung open and a young Hispanic-looking hospital staff member walked in. I see you're awake, he said. How are you feeling, Staff Sergeant? Ignoring the question and the comment about his prior military rank, Cal answered with a croak. Where am I? They brought you in. They brought you over here to Vandy after the attack. You were pretty damn beat up. Haven't seen anything like that since I was in Iraq. As he talked, the nurse busied himself by taking notes from the machines Cal was hooked up to. How long have I been here? Cal asked. About a week. You were full of holes and in critical condition. You got lucky, though. The bullets missed anything vital. No permanent damage, mostly blood loss. By the looks of your other scars, this isn't the first time you've spent... This isn't the first time you've spent in a hospital. The docs wanted to keep you sedated for a bit so your body could heal. When can I leave? The man chuckled, just like a Marine. Staff Sergeant, you're not going anywhere for a few days. Why don't you kick back and let us pamper you a bit? As the nurse continued around the room in what looked like a practiced habit of checks and rechecks, Cal wondered how he'd found out about his military service. I guess you can find pretty much anything on the internet these days. I've got to get out of here and talk to Jess's parents. The man circled around again. Can I get you anything, Staff Sergeant? Call me Cal. I left that Marine stuff behind. What do I call you? My name is Brian Ramirez, or, or you can call me Nurse Man. You said you were in Iraq. Who were you with? I was with you Jarheads. I was a corpsman with 1-2. You were with 3-8, right? Yeah, Cal groaned as he readjusted. How about I just call you Doc? No problem. Takes me back to the days with my platoon. You dumb grunts can never remember anybody's real name. You need anything? I'm good. Thanks, Doc. Brian nodded and left the room. Cal was, surpri Cal was surprised to have a corpsman taking care of him. Maybe he'd been paired with Brian once they found out he'd been in the Marine Corps. Whatever. He just wanted to get out of the hospital. So one thing that I noticed in the last chapter was that I jumped around point of views before. I don't do that anymore because it's confusing. You know, Cal to Dante to Shorty to Jess to whatever. Um, I like to stick to one point of view. And for the most part, I feel like I did that in chapter two. And obviously the introduction of Doc Ramirez, uh, who we will get to know much more of soon. So uh, hang in there. Uh, we will get to chapter three in the next video.